Okay, well, good afternoon to everyone joining us um, on the call and um, especially on the East Coast, of course, and then good morning for those of you um, joining us from the West Coast. My name is Kyle Klein. I serve as Director of Strategic Partnerships at the NACO Financial Services Corporation, and uh, it's our privilege to be hosting today's webinar um, with NACO on the topic of simplifying your treasury with data. Um, today, we are joined by the Vice President of uh, 3 Plus 1, our uh, partner at, at NACO and at NACO FSC, and endorsed uh, national best practice for liquidity data um, uh, analysis and monitoring service. So we're going to hear from um, Garrett, and then I'm also really pleased to announce that we are uh, joined also by Mr. Timothy Reeves, who is the CFO at Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, also a cash fest by three plus one client um, who's going to share more about his uh, story, uh, his experience working with this uh, service and, and how the data insights that he has received from three plus one has been beneficial to his work at the county there at Lehigh County, as well as to his taxpayers. So a um, lot of good stuff to share with you uh, today. Thank you so much for tuning in to the webinar. Um, we do have uh, opportunities throughout the webinar. If you'd like to ask any questions, the, there is a chat function at the bottom of your screen, and uh, you can simply type your question in, those ch in the chat, and then we will be monitoring that for, um, for any of those questions, and we'll make sure we get through those uh, as many as we uh, possibly can. And then also, I just want to mention today's uh, webinar is being recorded. And um, it will be available uh, available on the NACO website following the, the webinar. So uh, if you have to jump off early or if you have colleagues uh, there at your county, um, you can uh, feel free to share that and we'll follow up as well. So um, all of that being said, I would like to introduce, um, I introduced uh, Garrett McDonald, who is again, the vice president of three plus one. And then I'd also like to read a, a bio here uh, for Tim Reeves. Uh, so Tim Reeves is the CFO at the County of Lehigh, Pennsylvania. He's managing the financial strategy. He oversees all the financial and budgeting functions for the county. And that county has a total revenue, um, or it did in 2021, at least of over $500 million, and they have over 2,000 employees. Before being named the CFO in 2014, uh, Reeves was the Director of Collections and Tax Claim Bureau with the county for four years. In addition to the 12 years with the county, Reeves spent a total of 20 years in the public accounting uh, world with, the Deloitte, uh, with Deloitte & Touche and corporate accounting um, with various companies. Um, so a good mix of, of public and private sector experience. Uh, Reeves holds a Bachelor of Science uh, degree in accounting with finance minor from Pennsylvania State University. And um, my alma mater, as you might be able to see from my background, if you're familiar, is, is Indiana University, another big, great Big Ten school, uh, Tim, so I won't hold that against you. Uh, <laughs> he's also a veteran of the uh, United States Army. Uh, with an honorable discharge in 1986. So welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for your time today. Um, also, thank you to all of the participants for joining us today. And I'm just going to turn it over to Garrett right now. Garrett, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Kyle. And I appreciate all of our webinar attendees for joining today. Um, as Kyle said, my name is Garrett McDonald, and I'm with 3 Plus 1. And we're really excited to have Tim Reeves join us today from the county of Lehigh in Pennsylvania, a, a great county, beautiful county, been there many times. And uh, in addition to the bio that Kyle Klein read, I just would like to say that Tim is also a great leader, um, is really great at what he does. And uh, we're just so honored to have him join us today. So thank you for taking time out of your day. We know that you're busy with a lot of different tasks and priorities. So we appreciate um, you taking just a few minutes and we're going to end early and we hope to take some of your questions. We'd also like to thank the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania um, for their great partnership and endorsement of Cash Fest by 3 plus 1 CCAP. Um, and the entire team there is great to work with and provides incredible services to, to its members across Pennsylvania. And we also just quickly, again, want to say thank you to the National Association of Counties for their partnership with CashFest by 3 plus 1. 
Um, again, we have uh, an endorsement and a partnership with NACO and our work together um, has brought about $500 million back to the communities that we serve across the country. So we're really proud of that. Today, um, we're going to have a conversation. This isn't going to be a presentation per se, but it's going to be a conversation about how to simplify the treasury picture and how to use liquidity data really to enhance your finance team's great work and complement what you're doing on a daily basis. And we're going to talk a little bit about Lehigh County, and it's, um, again, in Pennsylvania, and it has a population of about 370,000 people. And as Kyle Klein mentioned, it has about a $500 million a year annual budget um, and has been working with 3 plus 1 since about 2015. And Tim, did I miss anything about Lehigh County? What else can you tell us about your great county, sir? Yeah, sure. No, I think you've hit the highlights for sure, Garrett. I think the, um, the one thing that's worth pointing out uh, is that Lehigh County is a home rule county, um, which means that we have uh, nine commissioners and one county executive. And I know that that's a little different than perhaps a lot of people on the call today. Um, and, you know, it, it obviously has its pros and cons, but uh, what that means is typically when it comes to the budget, as well as to any um, changes that we, that we want to incorporate here at Lehigh County, um, I've got to get, you know, 10 people up to speed with, uh, you know, the information or what it is that we're doing. So, um, and, and the good part of that, of course, is, is that you get a lot of different backgrounds uh, from 10 different people uh, weighing in on some of these decisions and stuff. So it's a little, little unique here to Lehigh County, but I think it serves us well and, um, and certainly has, uh, has been a, uh, you know, a pleasant thing to, to, to work for here in the last uh, several years. That's very helpful, Tim. Thank you very much for that additional information. Yeah. You know, Tim, when we were first talking um, way back in, in 2014, even, even though we started in 2015, we were talking about this idea of liquidity data and how it was a little different than cash flow. And the picture on our screens today um, shows us what this data looks like in its raw form all the way to the left hand side of, of your screen and and Tim I know you know what it looks like when you have tons of data being thrown at you on a daily basis and more data now than ever and sometimes it can be challenging to find the time to to sort it to arrange it to present it and that's kind of like what liquidity data is like compared to cash flow uh, for all intents and purposes, cash flow is how a public entity sees its cash, how a county sees its cash, paying payroll, AP, making sure you have enough money on deposit to do what you do on a daily basis. But in this environment, more than ever, Tim, as we're going into an area where we have rising rates, um, liquidity data becomes even that much more important to ensure that you're getting the best value on all of your cash. And liquidity data is different from cash flow in that this cash flow spreadsheet that you see in front of you, Tim, looks a, a little bit like what a county might use on a day-to-day -day basis to manage cash. Would you agree? Absolutely, yep. And a lot of times the question is, well, we don't need an additional liquidity data resource because we're already looking at cash flow. But what you see on your screen now, and it's a part of simplifying your treasury data to get results is the duration capability of all of your cash. It's looking at all the different liquidity levels, liquidity level four that you see on your screen, 16 million, that cash is available between 18 and 24 months. Level three, 15 million, available between 12 and 18 months. Level two, level one. Then we have a cushion that's available for up to 30 days and then working capital. And Tim, there are some times during the year when you have cash and you know you can invest it, but then there are other times where historically there are, are little cash balances. But how has this changed, the liquidity data picture, how has this changed how you all operate in Lehigh County and how do you use this on a daily basis to try and earn as much as you can and, and maximize the value on your cash? Sure. I, you know, I think the, um, 
you know, the biggest thing for us here at Lehigh County, when we talked about uh, cash flow in the past is, you know, we were good at tracking um, our cash flow. And <clears throat> one of the unique things uh, that we that we face here is, is that our fiscal year end uh, is a calendar year end and our human service area uh, runs on a fiscal year end of June 30th. So we have two different year ends that we balance. And um, a lot of times the cash flow with their uh, needs come the end of June sometimes, you know, gets mixed with uh, how long we have to continue to fund them until a state budget is approved or something like that. So, so, so we were doing a lot of, of cash flow analysis. And I think, I think the biggest piece, obviously, that we were missing in this slide that you have up, Garrett, represents pretty well, um, is, is taking a look at the liquidity and not just looking at the ins and the outs of the cash, but when those reserves are at their you know, peaks, um, and the timing that, that, that those typically uh, extend through uh, gave us the comfort level to then say, okay, what, what is our investment strategy now? It's not just managing the ins and the outs of the cash, but saying, you know, how long do we have these peaks and valleys of cash that we can um, earn, you know, much better returns? And, um, and I think that, you know, uh, my, my experience in the uh, public sector is for the most part, I used to have a team of treasury professionals that I worked with or worked for me. And so I, I, I typically got a lot of the, you know, the data that we needed to make those types of decisions in house. Uh, when I came to the county, that was one of the things that I recognized early on is, is that the treasury function is, is something that we just don't have um, the expertise in-house to, to one, gather that data, analyze it, and present it in a way that allows us to make the decisions that we need to make. And, um, you know, that's okay uh, because, you know, we, we, we have what we have, but what, what I was able to do uh, here at Lehigh County was uh, take the staff that I did have and kind of reallocate them and work with our other uh, agencies, meaning our, our auditors or some of the other things and, and have them do more work uh, for that area to try to reduce some of their fees, which basically made any additional fees that we were you know, uh, paying to three plus one for the work that they were doing, um, a, you know, a, a neutral cash position for us. And, um, and that's really been you know, a, 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 an easy sell for me uh, as the CFO, as I go to uh, the nine commissioners and a county executive, uh, when I can show them that, you know, uh, the, the, the amount of fees that we pay uh, to have this type of analysis and, and data presented not only pays for itself tenfold with what we earn, um, but from a, from a cash flow standpoint, it's a neutral cash flow position. So, it, it's been a tremendous uh, benefit for us, and I, I think that uh, it's been very well received by everyone involved. You know, Tim, one of the, one of the biggest uh, areas that um, we hear feedback on from the different entities that we work with across the country is, you know, am I gonna look bad if I am utilizing an outside provider to help me look at liquidity? And what would be your feedback to, some, to someone who is saying that today? Well, as it was mentioned in my bio, I, I spent some time in the military, and one of the, the lessons that I learned very early on in there is, is <clears throat> you don't have to be great at everything, but if you surround yourself with great people, you'll be well served. And this was an area that I didn't feel that I had the great people or the great people that you know I needed to be well served, and so therefore... Um, you know, it, it's, it's not a, a, a negative on me um, or, or anyone here to say, you know, we, we would like to go out and, and get the people that are the experts to help us, um, you know, do better in this area. And so that's what I would recommend to anyone is, is that, you know, you, you, you don't have to, to look at this as a negative, but, you know, flip it to a positive and show um, you know, that you're willing to allow 
you know, people with, with, you know, years and, and, and a wealth of knowledge to help you uh, manage your finances uh, better. What's incredible, Tim, is that when we started looking at the consolidated view of cash for Lehigh County, you'd given us some feedback and said, look, I think this is great to have a consolidated view of all of our cash, but I'm looking at cash in different groupings. And the two main groupings for Lehigh County is one, all cash that excludes what you have as your health choices accounts, and those are stress tested separately, but also everything else outside of that. So how do you manage looking at different account groupings of cash? And how would you communicate to some of your peers about how to best put that plan into action so that you're looking at cash the way that the county looks at it, but also not leaving anything on the table and thinking, well, this is cash that we can't have any value added on. And sometimes there are accounts and cash that statutorily you can't earn on. But that account grouping picture is very dynamic and it can help a lot of counties around the country determine, hey, look, we do have these different groups, but it doesn't mean we can't maximize the value on that. Yeah, exactly. And I think that you know that's what um, one of our shortcomings uh, certainly was in the area of, of liquidity is, is that we have this uh, health choice money that, that we know um, was always out there, but because of the timing of, of when the state approves their budget and just some different things, um, we always kind of viewed that separately and said, you know, we need to kind of maintain those resources so that we have them. And, and again, I think in, in breaking out this into the different pieces, we not only looked at the money that comes in from our tax revenue side, but we looked at the money coming in from the, the human service or the health choices and, 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 and even grants and some of the things that we, you know, sometimes we get um, the grant money and, and the American Rescue Funding is another example of, of, you know, the way that we've kind of looked at these different things in different buckets and analyzed them exclusively to, you know, to, to the needs of that organization, if you will, and the timing of when that cash uh, is with us and how long so that we're able to maximize the return on those funds rather than to just let them sit uh, idly earning, you know, minimal rates of returns. And I think it's important to note too, Tim, that um, when we started working together, you had all of the players in place. You were using a broker to purchase um, securities and, and put cash to work. You had a great banking relationship. And so why does Lehigh County look at cash flow and liquidity separately? So I, you know, I think that um, we, we did have, have a great uh, relationship. And uh, one of the things that, that I always value in any of my, you know, relationship is, is order, in order for it to be a true relationship, both parties need to get something out of the relationship, right? It's not a one-way street or it doesn't work. And, um, and I think with, you know, with our, our current bank and the broker and stuff that we were using, um, I think that they, they were certainly um, looking out for our interest to a certain extent, but not, um, you know, maximizing it, if you will. And so I think that uh, when we were utilizing them on a cash flow basis, uh, it certainly was you know, we were, we were uh, investing at different uh, times versus building a tier of investments over the course of a year um, that provided that extra liquidity. And I think that that was, you know, the big difference with working, that, working with them exclusively versus uh, working with, with three plus one to help us to, to kind, of, kind of develop that relationship even uh, more than it was. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, at three plus one, we're not a bank. We don't provide investment advice and we're, we're not a broker. We don't invest money, but there's a large benefit, Tim, and, and you've realized it at the County of Lehigh to having that third party data provider. And there's a, a lot of uh, your peers out in the marketplace today that say, how is this going to work within my current process? And Tim, you had a process before 
And when we were talking about bringing liquidity data and looking at uh, your banking services arrangement and, and trying to assess it on an ongoing basis, um, you were asking all the right questions like, you know, why do I need to do this on an ongoing regular basis? Are those agreements going to change often? And we have seen them change significantly over the years. Um, how does this work within your current process? Uh, for example, we meet at least on a quarterly basis and we um, communicate with your banking providers. You have given us permission to do that as a third party data provider. And you give direction and help lead the efforts in liquidity. But how does this work within your process in your office right now? And, and what would be your feedback to those counties around the country that are saying, you know what, we have a process. We, we like what the process is, we're happy with it. Why would we change it at all? Yeah, and I, you know, I think that the, um, you know, the number one uh, area with that is, is that um, the, 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 the information that um, three plus one is providing is, uh, you know, something that we, we typically don't have the time to do um, or the expertise to do. And it allows us to do a couple things. One, it allows us to communicate differently with, with the bank. Um, and two, in some ways, you know, it takes, it takes a little bit out of the sting, if you will, of, of working with the bank when, you know, you can say, hey, you know, we're getting this recommendation from, um, from our, you know, our, our partner three plus one. And, um, you know, I think that the, you know, the key aspect of all of this is, is that, you know, our interpretation or our view is, is three plus one is truly an extension of Lehigh County staff because, um, you know, we do have a relationship. We value the information that you're giving us. And now working with the bank, they understand that not only are they, you know, relying on our expertise and what we know, but they know that we have three plus one behind us as well, uh, giving us, you know, even more uh, accurate and up-to-date information on, on what's happening in, in the banking world. And so, you know, I think that it's, it's just helped with the overall flow of conversations and the timing that, you know, we really need to meet with our, our bank on an ongoing basis. That's, that's great information, Tim. Um, you know, you know, just as well as anybody that things change. Um, the economy change, economic factors are changing on a regular basis, time changes. Sometimes there are times where you have your budget process or you're completing your financial statements. COVID has changed so much, right? Um, there are personnel changes. We've heard from uh, you know, almost every entity that we work with that over the past two years, they've had significant personnel changes or they have shortages and it's hard to fill those positions. And then there's an opportunity cost. There's an opportunity cost to not do something. And sometimes there's an opportunity cost to the small changes that it might take to do something like look at liquidity data or take advantage of new market opportunities. Um, I know from, from working with you that you are not adverse to change, but it's almost kind of a, 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 a running term that's said in government that, hey, sometimes change takes a little while. And sometimes that, um, you know, when we're talking to someone, we're apprehensive about it. Um, how do you look at change and how do you go forward with change management within your organization as there is constant change always moving about, you know, a, the cash fest score for um, three plus one is a score that measures um, five different areas of cash fest, liquidity proficiency, how liquid are you? Are you too liquid, not liquid enough? The Warnock rate indicator, the effective rate on funds. It's looking at your investment policy and cash flow optimization and also the percent of available funds providing cash. And it would be great to say that at all times, everything's running on all cylinders and everything's perfect all the time, but there are times where you have additional time and you don't. And there are times when the market has higher rates and there are times when they have lower rates. How do you manage that process and, and keep moving forward? And what would be your advice to someone who's saying, you know, I, it's very hard 
to manage through all of these changes that are happening at the same time? Yeah, I, you know, I think the, the thing that's unique, um, especially in the government setting that, that I didn't experience um, in the public sector was it feels like every four years is, you know, a new set of commissioners or, or a new county executive. And so that just that change in itself sometimes uh, can create some level of, of hardship because you might get some momentum as you're, you know, going through a big project or something like that. And then, and then all the players may switch. So, so, so that certainly uh, has its unique, um, you know, uh, difficulties and, and, and challenges, if you will. But I think, you know, with, with the treasury side and certainly in, in fiscal and, and, and what we do here is, is for the most part, um, the day-to-day -day stuff, uh, pretty much stays consistent. It's just a matter of dealing with some of the unique changes that is occurring out there. And I do challenge all of my staff um, to, uh, you know, to read up on things that are changing in the environment and, and, and in, uh, you know, the fiscal arena, if you will. And uh, once a week, we get together and we, we, we kind of talk about things that are out there. And and, and what makes sense for us to, you know, to try to tackle, whether it may be, you know, way back when, uh, when switching from uh, checks to ACH payments and, you know, some of that was, was the, uh, you know, the big topic to, uh, to now paying more of our vendors with uh, credit cards or um, paying our jurors via a debit card rather than a a $9 check that they throw away and we have to reissue 10 times. So, um, so, so there's a lot of things that, that, that we kind of brainstorm on. And I think when you uh, talk through those things as a group, uh, the change doesn't feel so overwhelming. Mm. And, uh, and I think that's the way that we've uh, kind of handled a lot of the stuff because uh, you know, Garrett, you, you've met most of my staff and, and most of them have been, uh, with the county for, for 20 years or so. And so uh, a lot of them uh, have been doing this for a very long time. And sometimes, you know, that does uh, create some challenges when it comes to change. But I think if you, if you work through it, you talk with it and, and you talk about the benefits of it, um, most people do understand the importance. And then after, you know, a short amount of time, uh, once the implementation happens, I think that, uh, you know, we, I, I always get positive feedback from everybody that it was well worth the effort. Yeah, I think that's great. Uh, you know, just collaborative change management and, and leadership. Uh, one thing that is really difficult for entities to think about, and sometimes um, when we're talking to entities, they might say, we do not want to change our banking relationship. You don't have to change your banking relationship to uh, take advantage of cash fast by three plus one. Actually, we encourage you to have a, a great banking relationship. But there are those who feel, you know, we have to have a good relationship with our bank and we want to perform and we want to make sure we're getting the best value. Now, the key to that is using liquidity data. How do you balance the importance of maintaining a great banking relationship, maintaining a relationship where they're involved in your community and your county with the need to have to perform for your taxpayers? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, we, we have utilized, um, you know, one particular bank for a very long time here at Lehigh County. Um, and, and certainly when I, I took over in 2014, um, it wasn't my mindset to, you know, to make a change there or anything, but I think, you know, one of the things that, that, that I hold them accountable for, um, is, is that there are other banks and there are other opportunities and, um, you know, I'm looking for them to, uh, you know, to collaborate with us, uh, and to work with us to make sure that, that we have a very strong relationship, um, because our number one goal, you know, here at Lehigh County is, um, to, uh, to generate as much revenue and things that we can do outside of, you know, just our tax revenue um, to, to not require us to raise taxes in order to, you know, continue to do the things that we're doing. And so I think it's, uh, you know, that type of discussion and, and, and uh, 
and, and working with the bank. And now, uh, one of the things that I know that we're, we're currently in this discussion with you uh, guys is, is, is looking at, you know, going out for an RFP as it relates to the banking. And I think that um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're, we're looking to make a change, but it, it, it just kind of makes everybody sharpen their tools and, and, and understand that there is, you know, some other uh, players out there. And, and, and if you're not at the top of your game, then, then, you know, that could happen. So uh, I think it's important. And, and I do like to be uh, in longstanding relationships with, with our banks and our, our other entities and stuff, but I do like them to understand that uh, we do have other options and, and uh, you know, that they need to make sure that they're giving us the best value for what it is that we're, you know, looking for. Yeah, that's great feedback, Tim. And just over the past year, um, when candidly rates were near zero and a lot of entities across the country were saying, you know, there's nothing we can do. There's, you know, we can't invest. Rates are so low. We're very busy. There's nothing we can do to improve our banking relationship. Um, you actually made some changes. You didn't change banks, but we collaborated together. And um, again, it's very important to have a great, healthy, strong banking relationship, but having data to inform the decision-making processes with your bank is, is very, very important. And just over the past uh, few months, Tim, you've implemented some changes that are going to bring um, over $100,000 to the county. That's significant. Um, what, what would you say to your peers that say, you know what? I'm just not sure that there's anything that can be done and uh, we're just not in a position to look outside of, of where we are right now. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously most, most of our discussion today has been on um, the investment and the returns and stuff, but, but certainly the fees are the other side of, of any banking relationship. And, and what you mentioned was, you know, how we, we had, a, we have a very, complicated uh, banking structure that we were able to, um, you know, collaborate through and, and, and look at ways that we could um, do some things with that structure that allowed us to, to, to you know, change the fee structure, uh, which saved us, the, you know, the money and stuff. So that, that would be my best advice is to anybody is, is um, you know, there, there are ways uh, to look at both the fee side uh, as well as the the investment return side, and I can almost guarantee you, if you take a a deep enough dive into the data, you're going to find savings uh, in both of those areas. And what's interesting, Tim, is across the country, there are so many different ways that this data, taking a deep dive, as you as you mentioned, taking a deep look, can provide benefits. Um, you know, you have a unique perspective coming. Um, from the private sector and, and working with a large accounting firm, but um, the rating agencies are looking at liquidity data now more than ever. And liquidity is now 10% of the framework for ratings for um, S&P, Moody's, and Fitch. And it's important because when you think about it, having great feedback and data on the liquidity risk of your public entity can have an impact on whether you're able to pay the investors that purchase your debt. So it really does come full circle, full circle and having that liquidity score can make a big impact. And you mentioned it earlier, um, we have an incredible opportunity in front of us with the American Rescue Plan Act dollars to add value to what we're doing. And it's not just um, investing that money and, and keeping it, it's investing it into the community. It's doing everything you can to bring value to, to your taxpayers and constituents. But at the same time, we do know that not all that spending happens at one time, that it takes planning and effort and time to spend those dollars. And in the interim, there is some value that can be achieved off of it. And how does Lehigh County look at that plan? And how do you collaborate with your different um, stakeholders within the county to ensure that you're putting that cash together. There's so many around the country right now that are saying, you know what, um, sometimes communication is hard. And, you know, frankly, it's, it's hard everywhere. It's, it's hard personally, right? With your with families communication, we can always do better on communication. But what are some of the steps that you all have taken to work through that? Yeah, we, so um, we, we actually early on had uh, developed a committee um, that uh, sat down and and looked at a variety of things. And the committee consisted of uh, a couple of the commissioners, um, the county executive, myself, and then a few department heads throughout the county um, that 
you know, were, were particularly in tune with what it was that the, uh, our community itself was, was, was asking for. And so we, we sat down and, and kind of developed a cash forecast, if you will, on uh, those spendings of the American Rescue Funds and, and put them into different buckets and so forth. And then um, after, after developing that, we actually presented that to the entire Board of Commissioners, as well as to the public. Um, and the public came out and, and, of course, had some different opinions. And, and, and so we took that information uh, under consideration and we went back and probably over three to four, maybe five iterations came up with this uh, cash forecast that we feel uh, is pretty good, uh, at least through 2022. Um, we know that it'll probably change uh, as our forecast goes out through 2024. Uh, and, and, and just as we talked about change before, we know that in the next two years, you know, we don't know what's in store. And so, so that could certainly change, but we have a pretty good idea um, as to uh, where those needs are and the best way that, that, that we can utilize those funds. And uh, certainly through uh, the latter half of 2021 and into 2022, um, we have, have helped and, and received uh, many letters of, of thanks and appreciation from uh, small businesses throughout Lehigh County that have benefited from those funds, uh, as well as some of the nonprofit organizations that were struggling. Uh, and, and so again, I think that we, you know, we, we developed a team that was probably best suited to start that discussion, but they were not the only decision makers that we involved in coming up with the ultimate plan. Yeah, that's great information, Tim. And when you're thinking about um, overall how that fits into your liquidity strategy, uh, is Lehigh County um, putting that cash to work and investing it in, in the interim before you spend that, that money? Or how are you all looking at that strategy? Yeah, um, at, you know, as, as we develop the cash forecast, uh, again, we don't we don't you know think that it's going to be exact, but it at least gives us a pretty good idea as to how long we think we have access to you know to those funds um, that need to be spent by two thousand and twenty four. Um, so uh, so we you know are are developing and continuing to fine tune our investment strategy uh, with those excess funds, knowing you know pretty much what the needs are on a month to month basis throughout, you know, the, the calendar year. That's great. And, and we're coming to the end of this webinar, Tim, and I just want to encourage all of our attendees, if you have a question, please don't hesitate to send it over. You can either send it in your chat to the entire group, or you can send it um, privately to me, and I would be happy to address the question uh, for Tim or for myself. Uh, but as we're nearing the end, we just wanted to um, share some overall benchmark information with uh, the audience today and, and with Tim. And it's so funny, Tim, because um, you mentioned having one main banking provider, um, but it's, it's interesting to see a lot of uh, entities across the United States having multiple. And actually this is using our internal data at three plus one with the multitude of entities that we work with across the country. The average number of banking providers that uh, our clients work with is four. And um, that kind of goes to the point, Tim, that you were talking about is there are local providers that can provide great services. And there are larger banks that can provide great technology services. And they don't have to be mutually exclusive. You can take advantage of all different opportunities within your community and really leverage that through an RFP or through conversations or a soft RFP and making sure that you're getting the best value that you can on all of your cash. One of, one of my favorite comments um, that we hear is, you know, there's nothing that we can do with our cash because there's no yield to be found. And the average yield nationally on cash today is 29 basis points. And what's interesting is, is that we see the treasury market is uh, drastically increasing every single day. Um, we hear in the news that the Federal Reserve is thinking about raising interest rates. Uh, but Tim, you don't have to wait for that to happen. 
to get additional value on your cash. No, absolutely not. And, and as you indicated, I think that, you know, one of the things that we uh, have done and, and, and con will continue to do is, is to look at uh, some of the other providers as it relates to those, you know, buckets of money that we, we were referring to before, because some do have advantages over the other one. So uh, you don't have to continue uh, to, you know, to stay with just one uh, bank provider to, uh, to reap the rewards uh, for what, you know, you're looking for, particularly for, you know, for those, those funds. Absolutely. The average earnings credit rate for data after October 2020, and the reason why we went with October 2020 is because it had been a while since rates were, were zero, and we didn't want to provide data that was too early when uh, through the marketplace, the rates hadn't had a chance to fall yet, and we didn't want to provide recent data because rates are increasing in the market. But um, the average ECR for data after October 2020 was 25 basis points. And it's amazing to hear Entity say, um, you know, we, we have a one basis point earnings credit rate, or we have a two basis point earnings credit rate. There are some entities that say, oh, you know, we don't need to look at data because we don't pay banking fees. And that's that opportunity cost in between what you might be able to earn in the market versus if you're not paying any banking fees, that's great. But could you earn something in the marketplace, even if you're earning a small amount of interest, it's better than not earning any at all. And that's all changing, Tim. I mean, rapidly in front of our eyes. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, one of the things that we recognize is, is that, yeah, you might not be paying fees, um, but you might be sitting on a whole lot more money that, that you could put to use and still not pay fees because, you, you know, of, of the way that it's structured. And I think that that was one of the things that, you know, that we kind of took a look at with both the fee side as well as to say, listen, this is what we need to do in order to keep our fees down. But we were, you know, overcompensating, if you will. And so we're, we, we put that money to use and, uh, and, and certainly have reaped the rewards of, of that excess money being in play, which obviously has increased uh, our, our ECR significantly uh, over the last couple of years. Yeah, exactly, Tim. And uh, uh, someone just submitted a question and said, well, what do we need to do to get started? And I wanted to ask you that because there are public entities, um, county commissioners, there might be some CFOs, some treasurers that are listening today, and they're saying, well, you just don't understand the position that I'm in at my entity. And um, we hear it all the time. If you've seen one county, you've seen one county. That's true. Um, everyone operates differently. But how did you get started? And it took a little bit, Tim. We, we, you know, we did it in um, over a couple of years and kind of transitioned into looking at this more and more. But what would you say to an entity that says, how do I get started and how should I look at this? Yeah, I, I think the very first and most important step is, is to uh, tell yourself that it's okay to ask for help, right? Because um, I think that one of the big things that we all look at when we when we do this is 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 this a reflection on me is this a reflection on on me not doing you know a, a, a good job and sometimes i think that you know that's what causes people to uh you know to maybe take a step back and i and and my point to what i had said before is that's exactly the reason to take a step forward is is to yeah. say um we're not we're not all experts and we don't have the expertise um, to do this. And once you, you know, kind of get to that, that, that point, whether or not you need to uh, look at other areas where you can save money in order to spend money in this area, um, that, that's, you know, something that you, you'll have to look at individually. But I can tell you um, that taking that step um, on its own will reap rewards, you know, tenfold uh, in most cases, uh, from what people are doing today, I, I I've been in the public sector and 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 now have been in the government sector for over ten years, and I've talked to a lot of people who are in here, and I and I can tell you that they are not utilizing their cash resources um, to the best of their ability, and 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 it's not a reflection on 
um, those individuals. It's just a kind of a reflection on, uh, you know, what maybe governments have have come to, ex you know, expect or say is okay. And uh, and and I guess my point is is I think that it's 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 definitely time that a lot of people can can step their game up in this area and and prove that uh, that their decision to move forward uh, is not only beneficial for them but for their you know their county or whatever entity that they serve. Yeah, that's so well said. Um, Maria Walls from Beaufort County, South Carolina says nothing bad can come from planning. And I just think, Tim, um, over the years uh, of the, the collaboration that we've had and the sharing of the information and, and looking at the liquidity data, and those conversations bring to light a lot of questions that we ask each other during our calls that aren't just good for cash, but good for the county overall. And sometimes just having that third party perspective can really bring opportunities of, of different thought processes and, and different ways of looking at information that can be beneficial uh, to the county as a whole. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that um, uh, again, you know, coming from, from the public uh, entity, it was, it was refreshing for me to have some of those conversations, uh, you know, with you and, and Joe, uh, Joe and Peter and, and, and all the folks that we talked with early on um, just about this whole topic. And then, and then jumping in, um, I think, you know, it, it got some of my staff, you know, even more involved and excited about some of the things that we were seeing happen and stuff. So, yeah, I, I, I think that it's absolutely, um, you know, a great a great thing to open up these conversations because uh, it, 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 you know, brings to mind things that we're not thinking of on a day-to-day -day basis. The average total line item fees being charged monthly per client after October 2020. Now that's a jam-packed um, statement there. So um, a lot of entities get analysis statements, uh, billing statements, or uh, the services that they receive from their bank. And that's great because you wanna receive great services, but there's a cost associated to those. And so the average total line item fees being charged on a monthly basis across the different entities that three plus one serves and we serve entities all over the country after October, 2020 was about $8,600. And it's amazing because when we share that number across the country, Tim, uh, people say, well, I didn't realize, or they, I've had one guy um, say, you know what, I really appreciate the presentation, but I just don't believe that that's not the case. Tim, looking at the data and just having that third party perspective, what harm does it bring? Uh, zero harm. I think that, you know, this is a, a perfect opportunity um, for people to gather information and, um, and to look at it. And, and they may come out of it saying, you know what, we're not, we're not so bad. We, you know, we actually are doing a pretty good job and, 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 yeah. and that very well could be. But um, my, my guess is, is that there is room for improvement in just about everyone's uh, process or, or you know, scenario. Uh, so yeah, I would say that there is absolutely uh, zero risk in, in, in opening, up, opening up a conversation and, and looking into some of the data. And as we end today, Tim, I think you said it perfectly. Three plus one is really an extension of your team. And Cash Fest by three plus one is helping to uh, bring public entities data that helps them execute borrowing and investing in cash management decisions with more confidence and with greater ease. And um, Tim, any final words that you want to provide today to the audience of uh, public officials from all across the country on really why they should start simplifying their treasury with data? Yeah, I think that uh, the best way to sum it up for me was when we first met, um, one of the uh, brochures that you gave with the mission statement of three plus one uh, says our mission is to look through the eyes of our clients and align their cash flow and marketplace challenges with practical solutions. And that that caught me because, you know, we could all use an extra set of eyes. 
And I think that that's what, when I evaluated this, I thought to myself, you know, what would hurt to have an extra set of eyes take a look at this data? What would hurt to have an extra set of eyes, you know, give me some, some valuable feedback and stuff. And I think from there, that's where it started and, and, and just has continued to grow as we see the value in it. So um, I think that, you know, for anybody out there today that's looking at it, that's really, you know, the starting point is, is to say, you know, uh, three plus one can be an extra set of eyes to, to, to take a look at what you've been looking at and may see it a little different perspective and, and offer you some valuable feedback. Well, thank you very much, Tim, for joining us today. And I just want to say, um, you know, to you and, and everyone else on the call, thank you for what you do for, for your taxpayers and for your stakeholders at Lehigh County. We can't thank you enough for your great partnership and collaboration. And Kyle, um, anyone interested in Cash Fest by 3 Plus 1 can visit um, 3plus1.us or contact us with the information at your screen. Or Tim, I didn't ask permission before I say this, but they can contact you. I, I, I yeah. think you'd be okay with that. Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, well thank you, Garrett and, and Tim. We're grateful uh, again for your time and, and great job with the presentation and sharing the insights there from, from Lehigh County. Um, you know, Tim, your, your involvement and, and your presence here, sharing best practices, sharing how you've implemented this liquidity data, this liquidity strategy to extract more value um, for what you do in, in your county. That's a great testament to the mission of NACO, where, you know, we're constantly pulling uh, great case studies, great information together and, and bringing, convening our members together so that they can learn from one another and um, in turn, you know, represent and better serve those uh, those who they're serving in their counties. So thank you for for doing that. I, I wrote down the quote. It's a great leadership insight, Tim. Of, of you know, you don't have to be uh, great at everything. You just have to surround yourself with great people. And you know that I think about the mission of of the NACO FSC, who I uh, work for at NACO, and you know we're constantly um, looking out for great people, great companies, great solutions. You know that we can feel proud to get behind, and we know that it will offer sustainable, cost saving um, uh, solutions and just provide a value back. Um, so we go through and really evaluate that. And we have found that with 3 plus 1 and CashFest. And that's the reason that we are on the call today is to share this great information with our members across NACO. And uh, again, we encourage you to check out the website, reach out to myself or Garrett or Tim if you want to learn more information. And I should put a plug in for the new website. Uh, 3 plus 1 just launched a brand new website as of, well, I think today, um, it's going out there. So that'll give you some, uh, if, if you've been to the 3 plus 1 website, but it's been a while, I would encourage you to check it out. There's a lot of great new resources there that you'll find. So um, with that, I just want to thank you again, Tim. Thank you for your service uh, to our great nation uh, in the military. Um, really appreciate that and appreciate you being here. And just would like to thank all of our leaders across the country for all that you do each and every day to serve. And thank you for uh, your membership in NACO. Hope everyone has a great day. Thank, Thank you. you.